morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta, good morning, Southeast, East Coast, West Coast, wherever you are, good morning, those of you who join us on Facebook and those of you who are, who come here at the Daily Huddle in Live Zoom Studio, by the way, you can always join the Live Zoom Studio when you click on the link below somewhere and you can get to ask questions here. I am excited about today's conversation, to tackle this conversation, one of my favorite conversations in the world. That's the one today, it has made such a difference in my life. And, uh, but let's get us all primed, I'm ready, I'm wondering, so you have a question for us? Uh, yes, I do, Jill. Where are you? I am right here. <laughs> right here. <laughs> The only and place I could ever be. Right I know. Here. Right Thank here. You. Right here. And uh, Carl, yes, sir. how are you, my dear friend? I am doing fine. I, 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 I just can't imagine being any better. Uh, big sense of gratitude because a lot of things are, are going well. We got Alicia and Maria just joined us. I mean, what could be, what could be any better? <laughs> And here at the Daily Huddle, we say over and over, I am the way I say I am. There's a particular power in giving your say and living your life as your say. So thank you and welcome, Alicia. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. So, uh, Alicia. Should I sing for you? Huh? Should I sing for you? No, no, don't sing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and, uh, who are you going to hug today? And what are you grateful for? I don't have anybody to hug. So I guess I'll be hugging a tree if I can find one, which isn't much of a problem here. I can hug my cat or I can hug myself. <laughs> what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for you. And I am grateful for you. Giovanni, who are you going to hug today? I'm going to hug, thank you. I'm going to hug Manisha and I'm going to hug Maya today. Well, give them those hugs from me. And today's question, gang, is uh, one that is particularly uh, important. I wouldn't say important, but it's Giovanni's question. Giovanni says, discovering spirituality from religion. And Gio's had a particular journey that gives me and others the opportunity to see ourselves in this uh, thing called spirituality, in this thing called being connected to something bigger than yourself. What does that all mean? Uh, when, when we look at society, we tend to lump ourselves into groups based on religion. And some say this religion is the best. Some say this religion is the best. Well, what is really the best? And so this episode is structured to give you the opportunity to ponder on that question, to inquire there. In this day hosted by our dear Robin Stern, who's not here today, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with him and we're looking forward to a speedy recovery for him and a speedy comeback. Robin, we miss you. And if you're listening, we're hugging you right now. And this is your space. This is this question, discovering spirituality from religion and our dear friend Giovanni Gonzalez has agreed to share his journey with us. Giovanni, what do you want to say inside of that inquiry? Yes, thank you, Sorel. I am so grateful to be a guest on Spiritual Matters and I miss Robin and thank you, Sorel, for, the, for creating the context. And um, I guess I'll, I'll share a little bit of my story, right? A few reflections from my story and then maybe we can do some Q&A. Um, so it's critical for me to start where, where, where it all started, which is in the context I was born into, right? Being from Colombia, I was born into a context called being Catholic, right? A religion being Catholic. 
And there is a set of conversations, there's a set of ways of interacting with family and interacting with the church and interacting with the unknown that really just um, shaped me. And I would say shapes most people who are born into this, into, a, into, the, into the Catholic religion, right? So, um, so there was a lot of fear around life itself. There was a lot of fear around hell. There was a lot of fear about questions. There was a lot of, you know, something is, someone out there is really taking a note, right, of everything you do and everything you don't do, and you mess up, you know, you're going to go to hell. So the, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but as a child, there, I started being born, I started connecting all this fear around being alive. But then at the same time, there is this other conversation about love and that uh, the, uh, and the God is love and it's compassion and it's, it's, it's nurturing and there is a reason for everything and there is an opportunity from everything, right? And this, this beautiful context for life are also is happening at the same time. So as a child, it was, it was kind of confusing. It was this aspect of love and compassion and room for mistakes, but also this context of you're going to go to hell and you're not, you better not question. So as a child, I couldn't really be with all of it, comprehend all of it. And there wasn't much choice about it, right? It was just a conversation I was born into. Nothing wrong with it. Then I moved to Belize and Belize has, uh, does not have that predominant kind of, um, the, the Catholic church doesn't have that, that impact per se. Belize is a, is a country where more, more religions are there. And I met this unbelievable man who came from, I, I wouldn't know which de denomination, I think it was a non-denominational Christian church and he was a missionary. And it was such a perfect timing. It was a very difficult time in my life emotionally because I was living for the first time with my dad and he was, he had remarried and that was that, that relationship was very difficult at home. So as a teenager, I was dealing with what the teenagers deal with a lot of, a lot of, um, anxiety and a lot of questioning and, and you know, like the brain of a teenager, it's everywhere. Right. So I met this missionary, his name is Yo Yeager. I'm gonna send him this video. And you know, I, he just gave me a, a north. He, made, he gave me a compass for the rest of my life when he invited me to be part of his mind group. And I talk about this in my book. Uh, he has a mind group and he's a missionary and he, so he helped us connect um, contribution to others through religion, through being a mind. But when he invited me, he said, hey, I want you to take a look at this. And then I noticed it was a, um, a youth group, but it wasn't Catholic. It was a Christian youth. And I felt afraid. I was like, oh, my God, something's I'm going to go to hell now because I'm hanging out with the other with the wrong team. And um, and so he said, so what 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 in, in a nutshell? He said, so, so what what is God for you? And I said, you know, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm making this story short. But I said, I think God is love. And then he said something like this and gave me access to a different look. He said, well, are you love? And I said, no, not really. I was everything but love, right? I was just a teenager. He says, well, get closer to what you say God is and see which path fits better. And it just, it just made a profound difference to me. So I didn't know, I didn't see him as a threat. I didn't see the Catholic church as a threat. I didn't see anybody, I was just like, yeah, let me get close to what I say God is. And let me see which path helps me. Then a few years go by, something, something happens, right? And, go, and I go to school and I choose this, this um, I choose this career or this, uh, what do you call this, this major called international affairs with a concentration in international business. But international affairs is mostly about politics and history. Well, history is not very kind to the Catholic Church and it's not very kind to religion, given all the wars that had come around a, a religious um, crusade. And, and it's just, history is not very kind to that reflection to religion, right? And so I was like, oh my God, this is all a lie. So I decided to become an atheist. I don't believe in anything anymore. I'm, I'm gonna choose one less God. 
You know, there was a, the professor used to say, you know, atheists are not bad people. They just believe in one less God. They don't believe in the God of the sun. They don't believe in the God of rain. They don't believe in the God, Zeus, you know, Zeus or whoever it is. They just believe in one less God. They're not bad people because there was this conversation in college about atheists being bad people. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be atheist. And I kind of took on this conversation, this world conversation of being an atheist and not believing anything for a while. And it was okay. It was intellectual in nature. It was a, it's a, it was a philosophy that allows for questioning, right? And inquiry. It was all right for a second. And but something was missing for me. Even though I was intellectually reasoning things, right? Something was missing and I couldn't point to what was missing. Sorrel. But anyway, I went like that and I started meeting some unbelievable minds. And I, I started um, listening to people like Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens and just this unbelievable minds. But something was still missing for me. Like I couldn't get something was some intellectual inquiry gives you or give, gave me an opportunity to see the world in a particular way. However, um, the, the connection that can't be defined by the intellect wasn't there anymore. So even though I wasn't sad, even though I wasn't depressed, even though I wasn't someone who was um, against anything, there was a lot of love in my life, there was not a connection to something outside of myself. And I felt my world becoming kind of smaller and smaller. So to make the story short and now wrap this up, Sorel, there was a particular day, a random Wednesday, I'm on my way, I'm on my way home and things are really working in my life at the time. I had already purchased one house and I had another house that was close to graduating from college. And I was playing golf in Mexico, just a completely different life that I was grateful for, but something was missing. And I was, and I never forgot this moment in my life. I was at a street light, ready to make a left. This is how much I remember on here in, in, on, in Kennesaw, in Cup Parkway, going to Bear Parkway. For those that live here, I was at a street light. And I'm, and I'm thinking something is missing in me. Why am I feeling so down when everything is working? And I thought I mean, it had been maybe a year and a half that I've been practicing this. Oh, by the way, before I went atheist, while I was in school, I, I decided to be a Muslim because I had a lot of friends that were Muslim. So I wanted to be a Muslim and I, I uh, practiced the Ramadan and I started inquiring them what, about their beliefs. Anyway, it was really awesome. It was really fun. And then, but from there, I went to atheist. And then here I am at the street light. That was an important part of that conversation. And so I'm at a street light and I asked, and I remember how I used to try to connect to something bigger than me. I used to try to connect to God. I remember I used to do that when I was younger. And at that moment, I said, you know, let me try to do this again. This is my true story, right? It was an experience I felt. And so I got quiet and I said, hey, God, sorry I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm not sure you're there, but something is missing. And at that moment, I felt internally for myself an experience of something accommodating within me, like an opportunity to see life differently. I can't quite language the experience. There wasn't a particular voice. It was just the way I was interacting with my thoughts. However, there was this experience of something accommodating for the opportunity of the future within me. And there was a peace of mind, an experience of peace of mind but it wasn't driven by dopamine. It wasn't driven by chocolate. It wasn't driven because I was playing tennis. It was an experience at that very moment. And I thought, I've never felt this way before. So then at that moment, I discovered there's access to something bigger than me within something called spirituality. Let me take a look at that. And it became my life journey. And then I can make another, Sorel, I can go on about what that journey has been for me to connect to something bigger than me without a particular label. 
But to give it, but to give it a, a, a sense of what I'm pointing to is that I discovered or I see newly the intelligence at the heart of the universe. You know, like when I saw the first time my, my son's hands, you know, the tiny little hands, my daughter's hands, there's a particular perfection that is mesmerizing, you know, and anyone who has gone, has been through that, it's just mesmerizing. And there is something beautiful about this universe. Never mind human consciousness, so about the universe itself. And then I started studying science, right? How my body connects to everything. Anyone who is interested in the way the body works, you can't help but mesmerize by the body itself how everything is connected and it all starts from nothing. And it's the same, it's the, it's the same for animals, right? It's the same for a cat, you know, the millions of cat hairs, the whole thing, how trees grow, right? They're growing. What is at the source of everything? And that connected me to spirituality. And then I, I saw, to wrap the whole thing up, Sorrel, then I saw a quote from Albert Einstein where he says uh, something around, I just want to know how God thinks. And then he was pointing to studying the universe. And when a person studies the universe, really studies it, not an opinion about it, but you study it, right? One cannot be mesmerized by discovering an opinion of my opinion, how God thinks by studying the universe as it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I... That's my story on how I discover spirituality from religion, Sorel. So I'll stop there, Sorel. And Giovanni, I, I, I dare say that your story may not be different from anybody else's story. There's this discovery that I have gone through, that you have gone through, Carl, Alicia, Pamela, and, and Maria, that you get to the place where you get connected or you get to the place where you are not connected. So uh, Giovanni and I wanted to have this conversation with you today to create the space for what Thursday is, spiritual matters, an open space where whatever your story is, you get to be with that it is okay. Wherever you stand on the spectrum, you get to be with that it is just perfect, just the way it is. And in the context of sharing with each other, you get to celebrate your connection to something bigger than yourself. So I'll tell you what, it, it, you know, as you were saying, Giovanni, when I look at how my body functions, how the universe functions, I can't help but wonder what's behind it or who's behind it. Well, maybe I'm behind it. As a member of the collective, maybe, we are the force. I don't know. So this conversation is designed for you to celebrate whichever way you choose to express your connection to that. And uh, I invite you to celebrate your connection to that by expressing right now, how is your connection to that, whichever we choose to create that connection, how does that leave you in life? Speak to us about your fulfillment, your joy, or your sorrow, whatever that is, as it is connected to your own spirituality. So who wants to say? I was just uh, heading to the chat. A, uh... Uh, years ago, I had a chance to counsel a lady who was having troubles in her marriage. And uh, after an hour conversation on the phone, she talked about uh, she wanted to meet me. The first thing when we met was, I want you to know I'm married, but you were so open with me over the phone and my husband is not. Can you help me figure it out? And um, before we were done, we talked for about two hours. And uh, at, at the end of the time, she talked about uh, she was challenged with church going. 
And whether Catholic or, or Protestant, uh, non-denominational doesn't matter, but she was challenged with church going. And I uh, had her look, um, we're beside a river, shimmering water, pointed that out to her, pointed the green hill across the river from us, uh, the, the, the whisper of a breeze through the tree. And I said, you, you, you see all those things? Okay, one of my definitions of God is the sum of all things good. Uh, so Giovanni, Saro, Alicia, Maria, Pamela, all the goodness that we are is part of God, my definition. So uh, yeah. not inconsistent with the Bible, but uh, we are part of the spirit of God and uh, uh, the substance of God. Thank you, Carl. We're, we're part of the universe. I take that. And, uh, you know, as Giovanni mentioned in his story, it doesn't matter what the journey is. You can come from being a Catholic to being a Protestant and going, oh, my God, I'm on the wrong team. I'm going to hell. To <laughs> Being an atheist and finding out that the intellectual uh, uh, work that you do is, isn't quite fulfilling. And then having an epiphany. And the epiphany, uh, I, I Sergio, didn't come from anywhere than you. You actually wanted to be connected. You asked, you said, God, oh, where are you? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Give me a sign. And that opened up something where you are. That said, you know what? I am choosing right here in this very moment to be connected to something outside of me that is just marvelous. And that created a sense of fulfillment and a life that you now choose to experience on a daily basis. And that is available to each of us. So Carl, thank you for sharing uh, that. Alicia, you had your hand up. She had her hand up, but she's on the phone she's, now. Yeah, she got um, a phone call. She got a okay. phone call. And I love the sum of all things. The, the sum of all good things. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Way of and at um, <laughs> and 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 I, I I have not contradictory view. Given that God, in my view, is all there is, I would say it this way, and this is the way that leaves me alive: the sum of all things. The sum of all things is God for me. And that includes the things that I would judge to be good, as well as the things that I would judge to be bad. Okay, I have something else to share. Yes, and, uh, uh, G Giovanni, you were you were talking about the miracle of perfection. You know, the baby's fingers and fingerprints and things like that, and we all. If we're aware of it, we have opportunities to help wherever. Yesterday, I happened to be uh, running a weed whacker around the church. There were a few things that I hadn't got to. And we'll, you see this tree here? The pastor caught me whacking weeds. And uh, I invited, it was a hot, humid day. I invited him to step in my office. I, I pointed at the shade from this tree. And he talked about this tree. And it's like, it's... It's like, ah, yeah, he didn't like it. And guess what? The red tape of getting permission from the church. I said, I just happen to have a, a, a pair of lopping shears in my van. He says, go to it. <laughs> so, you know, go, going from, that, that's a different angle, but going from that and that angle to this and this, Within 15 minutes, God gave me the opportunity to help that church in that way at that time. So thank you, God, for that. Awesome. You know, Carl, uh, what I'm hearing from what you just said is we can celebrate God in everything. Mm -hmm. In the trimming of a tree, mm -hmm. there is God. Yeah. There's the opportunity so, to look at that. There is that. There is that opportunity to look at life 
in that way, through that lens. Yeah. And I say that looking at life through that lens gives me access, and I dare to say, give people access to deal with the brutality that life has in an easier way. Life is brutal for a lot of people. Awful things happen to people from nowhere, completely unexpected, right? The piano lands on somebody's head. It wasn't called for, it wasn't built, <laughs> you know, it was just walking, man. And the piano landed on my head. And that's how brutal life is for some people at some point. Sure, it has been in your life. But allowing oneself to filter life through what Carl is pointing to, right? Where there is an opportunity to celebrate what I can do with a pair of scissors and how I can appreciate nature, right? And then filtering it all through a, something bigger than me. It is what I say where spiritual matters. One can, one can, one can take Carl's story and say, well, that's just you cutting the tree. And that's, that's just what it is. And it's valid. And we're not dismissing it. Spiritual matters doesn't dismiss that way of looking at things. But I dare to say that allowing oneself to connect it all, the moments where life is brutal, you know, there is a power within all of us to deal with life as it is, which sometimes is brutal for some people at, at some point, or maybe for all of us at some point in our lives, right? I, uh, my, son, my son has COVID right now. He's doing fine. His mother has COVID. She's not doing so fine. Now, it seems like, you know, she's going to be all right. But in the event that she wasn't and she doesn't make it, that's a brutal moment for my son. More than for me, but certainly, right? Is she cold for it? Was she? No, not really. Life is brutal sometimes. But when I call her and I talk to her, she's like, oh, I'm loving this. You know, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I've taken so many things for granted. You know, it's, it's just like, wow, I'm learning so much from her. Why? She connects it all to something bigger than her. So anyway, I just wanted to add that to the story, Sorel. And I noticed that it's 930. Sorry, Sorel. Go ahead, Sorel. And Carl. Well, it's, it's, it's that kind of conversation where uh, if, <laughs> if I give myself the permission to let it, I can be with that, wow, maybe, just maybe everything is spiritual. Everything. I'm breathing. You're fond of saying it's not a small thing. That is spiritual. <laughs> I'm alive. I got up this morning. You're fond of saying that's not a small thing, Gio. It's not. That's spiritual. I stubbed my toe and maybe broken now. That's spiritual too. I feel love for my family members and I feel love for you. That's spiritual too. Somebody cuts me off on the highway and I get the urge to flip the bird. Maybe that's spiritual too. Like everything is an access to something bigger than me being connected to me. Uh, Sorrel, if I can, if I can talk about the urge to flip somebody off, how about the, how about the grace? in that circumstance of not flipping them off. That's, that's where, where does the, that come that, from? That's like that both of them arise in the same moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both the, of the, them. The, the trimming of the tree, where does that spirit of helpfulness come from? Mm -hmm. You know, paying for paying it forward or paying it back? Both. Yeah. Okay. Both. <laughs> so well, Giovanni. I've, I've, I've got a, uh, I've got another meeting I've got to prep for, and uh, it's, it's been good. I'll let you, uh, let you go close down the meeting because I think it's that time too, but uh, I yeah. got to get going. Thank you much. Uh, Thank Sarah you, Carl. Much, Giovanni, everybody. Bye-bye. Good deal. Giovanni, thank you for uh, creating the space for this conversation to happen. Thank you for sharing your story, and uh, thank you for leading us to uh, the space where, yeah, Everything, including this conversation, is spiritual. Everything's spiritual. I love that. Yeah.
I love that. That was so beautiful. Thank you for connecting yeah. that way, Sorrel. That was so beautiful. Everything is spiritual. Pamela, Maria, great to have you here. Alicia, great to have you. And uh, we sign off in the same way every day. Love, laugh, laugh out loud. You know, you'll be laughing so hard. Somebody you hated, you find out you're in love with them. <laughs> eat sensibly, stress less. And by eating sensibly, we mean eat mostly plant-based. Give and sleep. And last but not least, move like it's nobody's business. Your body will thank you for it. We love you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. Until then, Giovanni, hasta luego, amigo. Great conversation. Thank you, guys. You have a great day. Thank you, Alicia.